Uh, mostly because Matt said he wouldn't let me hit him with a real one, so we made a fake one so I could beat him up a little bit. Uh, there will probably be some videos of that later on our Tai Chi Weapon Club Facebook page if you haven't checked that out. Um, but today we're going to talk about how to effectively fight long weapons when using a broadsword. Uh, it's something that a lot of people don't encounter because often when people train in sword, they fight other people with swords. You know, but one of our big goals, especially with things like the, the traditional weapons club, uh, is to let people use the weapons that they like and to let these weapons encounter each other as they would um, perhaps in the times of history. Uh, and what that means is that you might be fighting people with long weapons. That may mean bow staff, that may mean spear, that may mean the mighty blonde dab. Um, and there's a couple different things that we need to think about when we consider that. Obviously the first one is reach. Um, and the other one that a lot of people down to the pommel and brings that blade out as if he's making the cut, you can see that his distance is much greater than mine. I can barely reach his hand, he's already gotten to my body. So especially if we start talking about cuts into the arm or stop cuts, I really lose a lot of that distance. Okay? So what I have to learn to do is make up that distance. And what that really means to me as a broadsword fighter is I have to be really, really good at my yielding, rolling, and passing blocks that we've talked about in past videos. Those head wraps coming in and using those threshing beats get past the blade. By example, if Matt's cutting in from my left side, I don't just want to stop that and then try to cut. Because he's far enough back that if he's quick on his feet, it's very easy for him to evade that and come right back in with another cut or a big thrust. What I need to be able to do is to travel in with that. So as he comes in, what I really want to be able to do is roll past that blade. Because my advantage here, and this is true of almost all long weapons regardless of what style, the dangerous part is on the end. Even with a bow staff where my opponent can ostensibly strike with the whole length of the weapon, it's momentum that makes it dangerous. And that momentum is strongest out at the tip of the weapon. So if I can get past that dangerous part, just like a punch, if you don't get hit with the fist, it's not that big a deal. The same thing, so if I can get past this part, I have an advantage, okay? Now, lighter weapons like a bow staff or a spear can be fairly deceptive, something heavier like a Guan Dao. Once he commits to a cut, that's the cut he's making. So I can do a little bit of watching as he comes in and say, okay, well, here's where it's coming so I can get past that and get to the inside because once I'm in the inside, I now have an advantage because for him to fight me in here, especially to bring that blade to bear, he's got to try to choke way back and get that blade back to the inside. Now, he does have this pull so he can try to, even if he's at the extended, he can try to bring that down and make a block happen. But again, we're in close, so I have a lot of leverage. So if he brings that block in, I can choke that blade off. And now we've got a grapple. So there's a lot of things you can do if you can get in close with a long weapon. So the secret is getting in close. So I can do that a lot of different ways. And that's going to be those wrapping and yielding blocks. I'm not necessarily going to belabor and show you every single one. We've got the videos out there for how to do those. You can figure out how to apply those. What you need to work on with the long weapons is having the timing down to an excellent degree. Because you have to catch that weapon at the point as it's reaching you before you can roll past. Because of the momentum. And that's what brings us to our next point. Which is if Matt's making that cut and I try to make that yielding block and I have a moment where I stop and then try to move in, what's going to happen is Matt is going to plow right the heck through that and kill me. Because I don't care how strong your wrist is, 15, 20 some odd pounds of blade coming whipping towards your head with two hands creating leverage. If he knows how to throw that cut, I'm not going to stop that one. Then roll through to make that follow-up cut. So I'm getting that other hand in behind. 
I can cheat that other ways. Some people have described the broadsword as a shirt of iron. And the reason it's called that is because the broadsword is played, as we've talked about, so close to the body. But with that shirt of iron, I can actually start to use the body to that advantage. Let's say Matt makes that same cut, and I decide to go for my head wrap. I don't necessarily have to try to put that hand up. I can actually use my arm so what's happening is he is impacting that. Now that's gonna dig the sword into my arm a little bit. It's gonna be a little bit uncomfortable, but let me tell you, it's less uncomfortable than getting cut with a blade. So I can use that, and you can see now where my arm already is out here by the shaft of his weapon to seize that and come in for that cut, okay? So I can use that to my advantage where he throws that cut, and I'm just gonna come into the body, seize and make that cut. Now what you have to make sure you don't do as you reach out, if you're gonna lay this in there, is not get this arm past your blade because what's gonna happen there is you're gonna leave that elbow vulnerable and you're gonna get hit. I can do the same thing from the other side. If he cuts the other way, I can come in and lay that in where it's gonna come into my back, come through trap and cut, okay? So I can use my body as a part of that leverage as I'm rolling through. So I can either use my hand for additional support and then roll in, or I can use my body as support. But you have to plan for these things when you're fighting an opponent with a larger weapon because what Matt's got is all that leverage, because you see how far apart his hands are, he can create a tremendous amount of force by just snapping those hands past. It's unbelievable. If you've never swung one of these, you should just pick up something similar. Just pick up a bow staff and swing it and feel how strong you can be with that. There's no way to stop that with one hand. It's gotta be timing. It's gotta be correct use of both hands. He's using two hands. There's no reason you shouldn't. The broadsword, empty hand is not a passive thing. We want to engage that, okay? So that's gonna be a couple tips on how to fight long weapons with a broadsword. Try it out with a friend. Let us know if you have questions. In fact, we've made a lot of these videos at this point. And I'll be honest, sometimes we sit down and scratch our heads and try to decide, well, what do the folks wanna see next? What we'd love for you to do is let us know. Comment down below this video, say, hey guys, I have a question, or here's something I'd really like to see, or a technique I saw in a video, a movie, a form, and I'd like to know, hey, how would you actually use that, or how do I get better at it? Send us your comments, ask us your questions, that way we can make the videos you guys want to see, instead of just the stuff that we come up with at 2 in the morning, okay? Also, while you're at it, make sure you click like, share this video out if you want, subscribe to the channel, make sure you don't miss anything, check out Traditional Weapons uh, Club on Facebook, we'll put a link down below, that way you don't miss any of our fun uh, weapons combat actions. 